In this video, we're going to learn how to download data sets and also manipulate data sets, you know, cleaning them up and renaming and changing variables, things like that. So first of all, you know, we can open up Stata. And now there's a few different ways to go about accessing data sets, uh, depending on the type of data set. So let's say you have an Excel file. That's fairly common. You have an Excel file and you want to download that into Stata. You want to import your data. So what you do is, the easiest thing to do is you could go to uh, File, Import, and because it's Excel, you could do this option. If it's a CSV file that you want to access, then you'd select the second option. But let's say it's Excel. We select that. And this is, you could just browse on your computer where that Excel file is located. And here, let's say this is the Excel file that I want to load. Okay. So I've done that. You could even select which sheet in Excel it is if it's not the very first one. Now notice that here in this Excel sheet, this is a preview of the Excel sheet, the first row is sort of the headings of each column, right? The variable names. Now you don't want to download that as a data point, that first row. You want the first row to be a uh, variable name, so you would just check this box if that's the case in your data set. Import first row as variable names. All right, cool. Now we could just click OK. And there we have it. So now our data, our variables, are loaded here. Now, the a useful thing to be able to do is to browse your data set. So once you've d uh, loaded your, imported your data set, you could click Data Browser. And this is essentially like the Excel file. So it's like the Excel file. It's basically showing you all your columns and your variables. You can even scroll down to see you know, how many observations you have if you wanted. Uh, but yeah, it sort of gives you a sense, you know, like for example, here state, we could see that they are uh, words, you know, like letters instead of numbers. So that's that's something to keep in mind. If that's something you're going to want to like multiply with or average out, you're going to need to turn that into numbers before you do that. Notice that here you're just viewing the data. You can't actually edit the numbers like Excel. If you do, you could click on Data Editor, and then here you can edit it. You could also navigate between Data Browse and Data Edit this way as well. All right, so that's that. Now, uh, another way to open a data set, some data sets are sort of built in to Stata. You don't actually need them separately. And to access any one of those, you would do SysUse, S-Y-S, System Use. So the SysUse, so an example of a SysUse data set is the census data. So SysUse and then census.dta. All right, let's see what happens. This will should load that. Oh, it's not letting me. Why is it not letting me? Well, let's see. And so this is a useful thing to be able to, to navigate. So it's saying data in memory would be lost. So what it's saying is that if I do this command and download this new data set, it'll lose this data set. Not the Excel file itself, it'll stay there, but if I made any changes to this data set once I downloaded it, I'll lose that. And not only that, I you know, you can't hold multiple data sets at once. So if there's a particular variable like the state, I won't be able to access that anymore because it'll basically erase this in my uh, you know directory and it'll just uh, do uh, this new data set. So what you can do is you could just simply type in the command clear. So clear will basically erase it for you, so you're basically now uh, going to allow it. So notice I can click back to this command, the sysuse, uh, if I don't want to retype it out. And now let's see if it works. It was right here, so it didn't work earlier, but now let's see if it works. Enter. Oh, it works. So it downloaded this. I could again browse to see what it downloaded. Okay, so these are the variables. There's 50 observation, all these columns. All right, some of these are... Uh, states, uh, you know, and some of these are numbers. All right. Uh, one thing there on that note is that uh, if I, this original Excel file that I downloaded, if I click back on that, notice I, I imported that data set by clicking here, right? I clicked file, import. I didn't have to type in a line of code. On the other hand, if I wanted to type in a lot of line of code to do that, that's basically this line of code import Excel and then in quotes it has exactly where it was located the first row thing means that it's the first row is uh, you know the column names 
So this line of code is generated automatically when you do file import and, and download it. So if you had a do file going uh, and you wanted that first line of that do file to be uh, you know this for the do file to first download that Excel file you could just copy paste this as the first line on your do command you don't actually have to memorize how to do this you could just click here do it get the command for then doing that and then you could recreate it you know easily but anyway so now we're here we have this census data set notice uh, like I said uh, with data one sort of issue with data that a lot of people have is that you know it doesn't uh, you can't really go back to a previous version of your data set. So for example, if I were to drop one of these variables, if I were to just drop population, um, then I would basically lose it. I can't undo it. However, there's actually a neat way that you can undo things in data set, in, in Stata, and that's by using the preserve command. So let's say that, you know, I just type in preserve right now, so what it's going to do is it's going to remember exactly this 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 version of things. Um, now let's say I were to drop this column, this population column. If I want to drop it, here's the command to get rid of a column. You just literally type in drop, and then the name of that pop population. See, so it got rid of that row. Let's say I wanted to drop these three, uh, you know, region, this one, and this one. I could even drop all three of those in like one line. I could do drop. And then notice another sort of cool feature here is if I don't want to type these out, I could just double click and it appears there. I could double click on the one right below that. It appears there too. Double click here. All right. So the command I've typed is drop this variable, this variable, this variable, separated by a space. Press enter. It dropped all three of those. Okay. Well, let's say I'm doing something and I realize, oh wait, I wanted to call back, I wanted to go back to the one of the variables that I dropped. Well, again, if you didn't type in preserve, you can't really go back to it. You'd have to re-download your, your data site. You have to start from all over, especially if you did things in, in between, you'd lose all that work. But because I typed preserve, I could just then, the sort of command that goes with preserve is restore. So if I type in restore, it's going to take me back to exactly where I was at the time that I typed in preserve. So basically all the stuff that I dropped, I got back because it just reverts me back to where I was at the time that I preserved it. So that's how preserve and restore operate. Essentially that works as like an undo feature. But notice you can't undo just one step. It, it'll take you all the way back there. So if you're right before you were about to experiment with something, you might as well preserve there, then type a command. That way in case you lose something, you could restore it to that point. Now, the drop variable, uh, the drop command by itself, if you just type a variable name, will drop that entire, uh, you know, column. But what if you wanted to drop certain rows? Let's say you were like, you know what, I only want to look at big states here. I guess each row is a state here. And, you know, we could see some of these that are less than a million, right? Uh, and so let's say I wanted to drop any of these rows where the population was less than a million. I could type in this, drop if, and then pop less than 1 million, and it deleted the 12 observations where the population was less than a million. If I go back to browsing the data, none of these populations are now less than a million, as we could see. The first digit is here in the millions. So yeah, so that's how you could drop certain rows. You could specify which rows you want to drop by specifying, you know, which characteristic you want those rows to have. If you want the rows you drop to be this, uh, population less than this, or you could drop all the rows where the divorce is equal to, you know, something else, you know. So that's, that's how that works. What if you wanted to rename a variable? So let's say there's this, uh, you know, there's this, it's called pop, and let's say I want to rename that to population because uh, maybe that's you know confusing with something. So then you could just type in rename and then pop the one that its current name and then its new name that you want, population. And oh, right there, it renamed it. Uh, rename pop to population. So to rename anything, you just do rename its current name and then the new name you want to give it. 
the variable names, they can't really start with a number. They can obviously have a number in it. The variable names also can't have spaces in it. That's why usually if you want to put a space, you could put an underscore instead. And now finally, as far as manipulating the, you know, this data sets go, what if you wanted to create a new variable? All right, let's say, let's say that this population uh, is measured in, uh, it's measured in people, right? Let's say you instead wanted a population that's measured in thousands. So what you could do then is you could say gen, gen stands for generate, generate, and then the name of the new variable you want to generate. Let's say we just call it pop underscore thousands, so population in the thousands. So we're generating that new variable name, and we're going to say that that's equal to, well, whatever the population value is, but then divided by 1,000. So to generate something new, you do generate, so like gen, this, uh, you know, and that the new variable name, and then what that variable should be. Each row for this should be whatever this value is divided by a thousand. All right, now let's take a look. If we look here, oh yeah, the this pop underscore thousand, that's this, uh, the new thing that was generated. And yeah, that's 3893, which makes sense because the population there was 3,893,888. So in thousands, it's 3,893 thousands. All right, if you wanted to do it in millions, we would have divided it by a million, then this should have been 3.83, because this is uh, 3.83 uh, million. So that's how you could even create new variables. Uh, your new variable, let's say your new variable is just like divorce uh, squared. It could, it could literally just be gen, let's just call the new variable x, equals divorce squared. All right. So whatever this divorce is, squaring that gives you this. This this means it's a really big number. This means there's eight, you move this by eight decimal places, because obviously 26,000 squared is a huge number. But yeah, uh, you could even, let's say you wanted to do this divided by this, right? So Or let's say to do something that's more uh, meaningful, the ratio. Let's say you want to look at the ratio of marriages to divorces. How many more people, how many times more people get married than divorced? So we'd create a new variable, let's call that variable ratio, and it will just be the number of marriages in that state divided by the number of divorces in that state. So we would say gen ratio equals the ratio uh, of mer, the ratio of mar, you know, we can call it whatever. Uh, that's a new variable name, and that's going to equal the number of marriages divided by divorce. All right, so this new variable is going to be this. All right, and so if we look at what happened at that new column, yeah, 1.8, that means, yeah, 1.8 times more people got married in that state in that year compared to getting divorced and so on. So we could even, you know, look at these and see what that's like. So that is overall how you download uh, import data sets, whether it's a system-generated one or an Excel file or even a .dta file, uh, and that's how you could rename variables, drop variables, drop observations, and even generate new variables.